are awaiting uh, the President of the United States and also the um, Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton as well. He's going to speak in just a moment. Uh, I'm going to bring back my panel now. Jason Johnson is here. He is a politics editor for TheRoot.com, a professor at Morgan State University. Also, Ju Julian uh, Zelizer is a, an historian, historian of it and professor for Princeton University and the author of The Fierce Urgency of Now. Farai Judea is uh, a senior writer. 538.com and the author of Episodic, The Episodic Career, and Errol Lewis is a CNN political commentator and a political anchor of the Time Warner Cable News. Good evening to you. Um, as you look at these women who are up on stage now, Absolutely. what are you thinking about? Well, first of all, I went to Emanuel AME Church during the South Carolina primary, and it was very instructive. It was a trip where, um, first of all, the death of Reverend Pinckney and the other members of what's called Mother Emanuel helped remove the Confederate flag from the state capitol. So there is a there was a moment of racial unity. And I also uh, talked to Republicans who were very conflicted about Donald Trump at the time. What's interesting is that uh, evangelicals moved back towards Donald Trump. So I, I think that this dinner, this Congressional Black Caucus dinner, is reaching out and bringing people to the stage who have been part of American history, you know, during the, uh, you know, seven plus years of President Obama's term. And this is in some ways, this dinner is kind of highlighting how racial issues affect not only black people, but entire communities. Again, that shooting really changed the, the racial dynamics in South Carolina, at least for a time. And we'll see what kind of, if there's a kind of call to unity. This is a, a black audience, obviously, but what, will there be a kind of call to the higher nature, call to racial unity in America by either uh, President Obama or by Secretary Clinton. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see Trevor Noah, who's up there, the host of The Daily Show, relatively new host of The Daily Show, is uh, it is the MC for the evening. Jason, you know, uh, we were talking to Bruce Lavelle, who's a part of the Coalition for Minorities for um, Outreach for um, the Donald Trump campaign. And, you know, if it seems like it's, you know, pretty harsh uh, pushback from for him, it's warranted considering what Donald Trump is right. doing and how African Americans feel about it. I mean, the people at home may be watching and saying, oh, well, you know, why does he get such pushback? Um, the reason I question him about being tone deaf is because that is um, what African Americans are saying about Donald Trump, his campaign, his surrogates, um, you know, here in the United States. Right, right. Bruce is not doing his job. Okay, he, he is not doing his job. Donald Trump is doing worse amongst African American voters than any Republican candidate has in the last three cycles. There's no excuse for that. He is losing African American Republicans. There was an exodus of, 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 of the black outreach team at the RNC earlier this year. So, you know, for Trump to claim that he's reaching out to black voters, no, he's not. He's actually turning off black voters. And, and for actually, for David Duke to be polling higher for black voters than Donald Trump is now. Nationally, that's a problem. Is that true? That is true. <laughs> I have yes. not seen that. Boy, I guess. Yes. <laughs> so then, then what is it then? Why continue to say um, that, you know, Donald Trump is reaching out to black voters, Julian? Why continue to give that narrative if you believe it's a false narrative when he's actually not? Well, obviously, he is continuing his effort to appeal to a broader public than his base. I don't think the goal is actually to win African-American votes. I think most of his campaign knows that's not going to happen, given his record, given the kinds of statements we've had. But he's trying to soften his image uh, with a broader base of Republican voters. He's not doing well still in some Republican states. So I think that's partly what this is about. It, does that make it doubly even more so insulting to African-American? It's why the members of the CDC came out, considering, I mean, it was also what he said yesterday about the, you know, the birther movement. Sure, sure. Well, he, right. And to, to the extent that he's talking past black audience, he's not addressing them directly, but talking past them and about them to another audience, because I mean, I think Julian's exactly right. That seems to be what he's doing. And it's an interesting kind of a, a tactic. It's not the first time it's been done in this country. Uh, on the other hand, it doesn't uh, endear him to those voters for sure. And you, one thing that he doesn't want to do, I mean, it, it's a fundamental mistake that I think a lot of novice uh, politicians make. And to a certain extent, Donald Trump is a novice. He's never run for any office before. Uh, you don't want to enrage the base that can deny you the victory, right? It's one thing to sort of arrive at some kind of a standoff with them. Somebody like Ronald Reagan did that. So there's, uh, Hillary Clinton is about to speak. This is the video that is uh, introducing her, as you can hear there in the room. And they're showing Hillary Clinton and how she started and, um, um, you know, fighting for African-Americans. That's part of her resume.